as peaceful as possible. On the final story, I want to talk about the Madden, Madden shooting in Jacksonville. Uh, you know, I took a few days to really soak it in slash to be honest i don't like talking about depressing stories i try to be more optimistic and fun so i'm not a big like i don't like to talk about murders and shootings that much at all i don't enjoy it it's my least favorite thing to do but since this one uh you know I, it's pretty big so i wanted to talk about it first of all i want to talk about the victims two people died in jacksonville it was a madden tournament where one of the you know pro professional madden players one of the best madden players in the u.s actually shot a few people and then killed himself. So it wasn't like an, a random outside person. He was actually at the tournament playing. Uh, very chilling uh, footage of it from Twitch live stream. You could, you could hear the shots on and like people screaming. It's really sick stuff, but I saw it on Twitter, not gonna lie. And then also they have him interviewing him. He's got very cold eyes and he's like barely saying anything. Um, so it's very chilling to see it in hindsight. But the two people who died and, and their name is Taylor Spot Me Please Robertson. Uh, and Eli True Clayton. And I think the best thing that I could do, I'm gonna look for it later, they had a GoFundMe for the families and you know, rather than politicize the event, I think that's a nice thing that people could do is uh, you know, donate to, the, to those families because they just lost their son over a Madden tournament. It's very, very sad. I mean, th this is all of our dreams growing up as a kid is to play professional uh, you know, video games. I mean, that's like a dream job come true. Like I'm living my dream kind of making videos they were living their dream playing Madden professionally and uh, someone took their lives because they had mental problems. It's very, very sick stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out their, their GoFundMe and donate later today. Uh, Taylor, spot me please, Robertson, Eli, True, Clayton. You know, the victims always deserve as much shine, if not more than the uh, uh, person who committed the mass atrocity. So on that note, I wanna say there's a lot of stories and rumors going around about it. I wanna get to my truth without politicizing it, but obviously, the whole left wing is saying, uh, you know, mass shootings, uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta do something about this. They keep happening. They're of course using this as political fodder. Um, although I will say it's kind of gone away pretty quickly, probably because they realized it's not, it's not a great political um, thing for them. And on that note, I wanna say, you know, the, the left, the liberals, progressives, the, the anti-gun people, they claim to be the, the, bear, the gatekeepers of math and science. You know, we love math, we love science. Look at the statistics. I'm just going to be honest. Look at the stati statistics in Europe. They've taken away guns. They've taken away knives. They're banning cars in certain areas. And the murder rate's going up. The knife rate's going up. The gun rate's going up. The violent crime is going up. Rape is going up. Uh, these are all statistics that are going up. Acid attacks are going up. So it's that you could see a direct, there is no direct correlation in gun control and murder rate and violence rate. There's none. Uh, look at Chicago. It has the strictest gun gun control in the in the U.S. And I'm I'm not politicizing this. I'm literally just talking about math and science, since everyone claims to like math and science. Chicago has the strictest gun laws, and there's more murders in Chicago than even at this Madden tournament. It's sad, but certain uh you know weekends in Chicago, there's 11 murders and like 57 people shot, and there's never any news about it. That's why I talk about it from time to time. It's like worse than Iraq. That's why they call it Chirac. Um, they have strict gun control. It doesn't work. So there's no correlation between gun control and murder rate. There's no correlation in the United States between gun control and gun murder rate. The big stat that they use overseas is there's no gun violence in the UK. There's not as much gun violence in the UK. Well, yeah, but now there's murder and acid attacks and terrorist attacks. So it the violent crime is still up. The murder rate is still up. It doesn't matter if it's a gun or a knife. It's, it's not the inanimate object. It's the person. But there's no correlation. Um, between murder and violence rate and gun control here or overseas. There's no correlation between, um, you know, gun ownership in the United States and mass shootings. There's, there's absolutely no, if you look at how many guns people owned in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010, you look at that chart, combine the chart. If you really want to help people, you'll look at these statistics, combine it with mass shootings that have gone way up over the past 10 years there's no correlation. I'm not saying I know exactly what it is, but my personal perspective, and like I said, I'm, I don't want to politicize this, but if you really want to look at the st statistics, look at the rate of pharmacy pills, psychotropic pills, and medications giving to people over you know the past 30 years, and then look at the, the uh, school shootings and, and mass atrocities over the last 30 years. There is a correlation there, and there's also a correlation in mass shooters having mental problems and also being given these antidepressant or psychotropic pills. If you wanna jump down that rabbit hole, look at the 
Parkland shooter. The Parkland shooter was mentally ill and CNN reported he was on pills. He was taking pills. This uh, shooter, CNN, this is according to CNN, was prescribed a number of psychiatric medications and according to AP, was twice hospitalized in psychiatric facilities and prescribed antipsychotic and antidepressant medications. Uh, while, you know, this incident aside, I think everyone can agree regardless of political affiliation, there is a mental health problem in the United States. Uh, suicides are on the rise, even though these should be the greatest times for kids to be alive. You have suicides that are going up. You have people on pills. I mean, if you look at if you look at the rate of Americans on these pills and the rate of kids on pills compared to the 70s, 80s, 90s, you'll want to throw up just looking at these charts. I mean, everybody's on pills. Everybody's on psychiatric pills. Everybody's on antipsychotic pills or antidepressant pills. And it's really not great. I mean, some people maybe might need them. I'm not knocking Western medication. I think it's important and necessary in many ways. But the amount of uh, people on pills is absolutely huge. And I, I, I personally do see the correlation, especially I'm not just politicizing, I'm, I'm quoting CNN and AP. Uh, he was on psychiatric meds at a point in his life, whether he was then or before. And the thing about them is, First of all, the, the pharmacy industry, of course, you know, they want to make sales just like the pizza industry. They want to sell as possible. They called in, but they want to, uh, you know, they want to make a lot of sales. And you see them when you watch CNN or Fox News or most television, all the pills are, all the, all the commercials are pills, 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 pills. Are you feeling this way? Are you feeling that way? Are you feeling this way? Do this, do that. And then you see all the side effects and the side effects are like suicide. So it's like, wait a second, you're gonna give me a pill for being depressed and you're telling me one of the side effects is I might kill myself? I mean, isn't that a little bit crazy? And I'm not saying some people don't need them, but I think we've gotten a little bit too pill happy in the United States where I'm not saying not to use medications, I'm not a doctor, but there's many reasons that people can be depressed. It, you know, a long, harsh history of, of physical or psychological abuse that they might need years to, uh, shake off uh, and, and to be around the right people and to be in the right conversations and to really embrace the right mindsets. Uh, you know, it could be, you don't get out enough. You know, I get depressed if I sit inside too long. I get very depressed if I do too many drugs. Like I'm, I'm not saying I do drugs, but like if you say like marijuana, which is legal in California and uh, uh, millions of Americans use, it could be a drug that improves your life, and there are very many benefits to marijuana, but there's also negative benefits to marijuana, not only like the smoke inhalation, but also anxiety. You know, I, I think marijuana raises anxiety. For, for me personally, it does, you know? So it's like, that could be a, a thing. It could be, especially if you're using, uh, you know, psychotropic pills, that, that could be adding to it. So it's like, friend group, family group, who you surround yourself by, the media you listen to, what you believe, what you read, your faith, whether you have faith in a religion or a certain spirituality or a certain mind frame, all of these things uh, result in depression, you know, bad relationships with a lover. So we should be exploring all of the options before we go straight to pills. But the problem is you got 50, 100 million plus people on pills. I don't even know how many it is now in the United States because that's the first ditch. It's like, oh, this kid's got problems, let's just give him pills. And it's not good. Uh, and I'm not just talking about mass shootings, but it, it, it numbs your mind. Like if you do any drug from, you know, and some of these I haven't even done, but like you go from something as, you know, maybe harmless as marijuana to, and some people might think it's harm, harmful, that's another discussion, from marijuana to cocaine to heroin to like all these intense drugs that I've never done they numb your mind and they change your mind in some way. Marijuana changes your mind in some way for a time period. Cocaine changes your mind and it changes your heart rate. Heroin changes your mind and probably changes your heart rate. So it's a mind altering drug. And in a lot of ways it numbs your mind and in many ways it numbs your body. So a lot of these psychiatric drugs, one of them that I have tried, just to be honest, is Adderall or uh, Vyvanse or something they were giving kids. I never took it as a kid because my mom said, you know, my son doesn't need these. She, they tried to give it to me. They tried to shove these pills down my throat when I was younger. And my mom said, he doesn't need these. He's just a bad kid. He doesn't listen. He needs to get better, which was true. I was creative. Even now, I, I'm just so outside the box. I never did well in school because I, I don't like to listen to people's fake rules and I don't like teachers who are mean and stuff. 
And to be honest, I'm just like so independent that it's almost a problem. So, you know, I didn't do well in school, but I didn't need, I didn't need pills. Once I got to college, I tried them as far as to like study. And I took them and I was amazed at how strong these drugs are. I mean, these are like giving a kid cocaine for seven, eight hours. Like it, it literally has the same effect. Like you're amped up like this for seven or eight hours. It raises your heart rate. It turns you into a zombie. You can't sleep. And I'm like, they give these to little kids? They tried to give these to me when I was 13 and 14 years old? Are they joking? Are they serious? So a lot of these drugs mirror the illegal drugs that they don't want you to take. They mirror heroin and cocaine and all of these things. Not marijuana, but this is what they're giving to people. And a lot of these anti-psychotropic or anti-psychotic drugs, they numb your brain. So it's like if there's something crazy that you wouldn't normally do, and then your brain is numb and your brain is altered, you might consider to do something evil and terrible like a mass shooting. And I, I don't know that he was on it. Like I said, I don't want to politicize this, even though the ep ep epidemic of pills has nothing to do with politics. This isn't I'm not saying he's a liberal or that's what some Trump supporters are trying to find his Reddit to say he's a liberal. Uh, I, I looked at those reports. I'm not convinced that those are true. I've seen both sides of it. But I, I don't even think, or he was a Trump hater or something, but I looked at all those and I thought it was a stretch and there was no, there was no evidence. It was like a CNN report where they had an anonymous source. Nobody really confirmed it as far as I saw, so I'm not going to talk about that. But the pill problem is not a, a, a political problem. And the pill problem has a lot of scientific data as far as the correlation, not just from time period, but also between how many shooters have been mentally ill and how many shooters have been prescribed these, these drugs. You know, at a certain point in US history, people had mental illnesses as well, but they weren't force fed all these new age drugs that are like cocaine and heroin and, you know, numbing your brain and numbing your body to the point where like you can't even feel yourself and you can't feel, you, you have like no emotion. You already have little emotion and then you're feeding them a pill that numbs their entire emotion. I mean, I, it's hard for me to think that this doesn't uh, change your whole mind and your whole perception. It's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know, up to you, but it's like marijuana. If you've ever done marijuana, either edibles or, or smoking, and I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, suggesting it if it's illegal in your state, but it's legal in, in many states, including, you know, California for medical and I believe recreational reasons now. But when you do that, it changes your perception, it changes your perspective, and even when you're not doing it, you're always altered. It's similar to like psycho, uh, you know, drugs like. I, they're illegal, but uh, what, what are they called? Uh, psychedelic drugs like acid or, uh, you know, mushrooms. You know, there's been many studies, Timothy Leary, among others, talking about these things where it's like you do them once uh, and you, you trip out or whatever, but then your perception is still always changed. Like you, you can never go back to how you thought before because you've just seen it in a different light. And this could be positive. Uh, in many ways, and this could be negative in many ways, depending where you take it, who you are personally. And that's why everybody, you know, has to one, probably follow the law and two, decide for yourself. But a lot of these drugs um, that they're giving out to people, I believe it has the same effect. I've never taken a lot of them, but you know, it. you might take it a few times. You might take it for a year, two years. You might continue taking it and just continue numbing your brain. But once you take it for a year or a couple of months, you never become the same person that you were before because it's literally mind altering, a mind altering drug. So with marijuana, there's many people who say it alters your mind in a great way, same with psychedelics. There's people who would argue and say it makes you crazy and you know, you guys could have that debate to yourself. But with these uh, psychotropic drugs, you know, one would argue that it changes your mind for the better, it makes you a, a happier person. But there's a lot of also, I believe, scientific evidence that says it alters your mind for the worse and you know maybe you never return to the state you were at and you're you know forever changed so this is just a a conversation i want to have of course you know I, I talked about the victims taylor spot me please robertson eli true clayton god bless them i'm gonna try to fund their GoFundMe. and i, I reported that david cast the shooter not only was he you know a popular or at least successful pro gamer but cnn reported that he's prescribed a number of psychiatric medications AP twice hospitalized in psychiatric facilities and prescribed antipsychotic and antidepressant medications, uh, as a lot of mass shooters are. And there is correlations there. I'm not blaming the pills. I'm not blaming the drugs. I'm just simply trying to open up a discussion because, you know, at a certain point, we have to have these conversations because a lot of what's going on in the United States outside of this incident is a huge, 
huge mental illness problem. We have a huge mental illness problem. We have media sources pushing mental illness onto people, lying to them constantly, misleading them constantly, putting them in a negative mind frame 24 seven, and then the commercial is pill, 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 pill. And then they wanna kick Alex Jones off the air. Well, Alex Jones, it might be a little wild, but Alex Jones sells holistic pills. He sells, you know, pills that will get rid of things in your body. Like he sells all holistic pills. And the media that hates Alex Jones and wants to kick him off air, they constantly spread hate and fear, but then they sell these, these suicide pills or these antidepressant pills that have a side effect of suicide in them. So it's like, who are you really? What are you really doing? Are you really that kind and nice fighting Trump? Or are you making your audience depressed, mentally ill, and then selling them pharmacy drugs in the commercials. And this is a cycle that uh, you know needs to be called out because hundreds of millions of people are on these pills. Uh, mental illness is at an all-time high, depression's at an all-time high, and it, it shouldn't be, I think some of it's social media, some of it's culture, some of it's you know finances and all that stuff, but I think a lot of it has to do with uh, media, our, our pop culture, and the way that we're programmed and socially engineered to think the fact that we have no community, the fact that if you're like Tiger Woods and you try to say you love the country or you're neutral, then everybody attacks you. It's like it's like crabs dragging you down in the bucket. I could talk about this all day, but I'm, I'm gonna end it there. God bless the victims at, at Jacksonville. Uh, God bless America, God bless everybody. And you know, it, it's never good to see stuff like this. And I, I'm having these tough conversations that maybe people don't wanna hear, because I'm trying to really prevent further things from happening. And you could study Europe right now and you could just you could see the evidence that gun control is not going to stop violence rates and murder rates because it's it's not working in London. So you know people can say that all they want, protest in the street, but I find no correlation, and I find physical evidence in the real world today that it's clearly not working. I mean it's it's not. I mean you could just look there. It's based on who you have in your country, who you bring to your country what politicians you have running, and if you have hate speech laws that stop people from telling the truth, all these things matter. But I really wanna talk about the, the drug crisis, the opioid crisis, the psychiatric crisis, the mental illness crisis, because a lot of our problems, you know, are that's the root of a lot of our problems. And if we can free our minds, if we can heal our minds and heal ourselves and heal our friends and heal our communities, I guarantee you we'll have a lot less crime, a lot less division, a lot less hate and hopefully a lot less uh, mass shootings like this because it's totally uh, you know, unnecessary and the world should be getting better. We should not be going down in any category like this. So thank you so much for listening. God bless you again. If you'd like to support, I appreciate it. My Patreon link's at the top. That's monthly. I have DonorBox, which is monthly or one time. And then I have uh, my free email list. If you don't do anything, please just sign up to my free email list. It takes two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. 25 seconds if you're slow. Don't email me about it. Sorry, people keep emailing me like 50 times a week. I appreciate it, but don't email me asking to sign up to the free email list. Just sign up, it's right there, click on it, it's easy. If it doesn't work, try it later. I can't add you to it, just, just sign up there. Free email list, let's stay connected among the censorship. Uh, also, I, I just wanna thank you guys again and say that these four clips are gonna be chopped up and then put onto YouTube. Today, I'm gonna chop them up and slowly release them onto YouTube. So the four stories, of course, were uh, the Tiger Woods dilemma, uh, you know, John McCain, the uh, Jacksonville situation, and the CNN, whatever, you already know. I'm gonna chop this part out probably so it's not in the other one. So thank you guys again. All four clips coming to YouTube. If you haven't yet, watch my How to End Racism video from yesterday, it's a good one. I would love, more than a lot of other videos. I mean, it's got like 100,000 views, which is great. And um, I mean, a year ago, that would be like my dream. And I'm not mad, I'm not mad at it, but I, w I really want that one to spread, not for myself, because I, I feel like that's a message that's outside of politics. And I really want people to see that message because it's it's deeper than politics, it's deeper than me. And I think it would help and, and heal a lot of people and also get a conversation hopefully started so we can end racism and stop you know racism from, instead of declining, rising again due to just complete delusion and, and stubbornness. So check that video out. My new song, I Love Trump, I'm sorry, I Like Trump, is on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, everywhere that there's music, Apple Music, free streaming. I Like Trump, and if you if you Google it, I believe, and you search it on YouTube, it's the first one that comes up under I Like Trump now, so you know, just check that out. It's, it's a explicit content, but I'm gonna get a clean version soon and a lyrics video. Thank you guys again. I'll see you soon.